Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. Lord, we offer you this uh, this particular event na maraming pong tao ang ma-inspire, maraming tao ang matuto, especially Lord, sa Vision and Mission ng Foundation. And Lord God, give us the heart of service, Lord, na may bigay namin fully today, tonight, Lord, the aming best in whatever we do with whatever decision we make, Lord God. We offer you this day, we offer you this event. In your mighty name, in Jesus' name, we pray. like to call on Miss Gloria Rivera, the Director of Community Service for St. Anthony College of Technology for our invocation. Uh, please all rise and let's bow our heads 
and close our eyes to feel the presence of the Lord in our midst. And uh, let us go to the Father in prayer. Father God, we humbly come before you tonight. We praise you and we give you thanks, Father, that you brought us all to this place safely to witness the very momentous event of recognizing exemplary people for their extraordinary accomplishments on the CSR Youth Awards 2018 ceremony. First and foremost, Father, we would like to ask for forgiveness for whatever shortcomings we have done uh, that displeased you, Father God. May this occasion be filled with your Holy Spirit to guide us, to learn out of it, to do volunteerism, and uh, to strengthen our faith. May it inspire each one present here tonight. Father, for without your guidance, we cannot accomplish this undertaking. May you bless each and every one in this room with the strength and understanding that only you can give. We ask all this in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Everybody say amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Please remain standing for the Philippine National Anthem. Mayang magiliw Persang sinanganang Alam ng puso Sa ipipoy buhay Lupang hinirang Duyan ka ng magiting Sa manlulupi Di ka masisiin Sa dagat at bundok Sa simoy at sa langit Mo'y bukaw May dilag ang tula At awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagdilinil Ang bituin at araw na kailan pa may limang didilim Lupa ng araw na anwal at ipagsinta Buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na as we will have a minute of silence for a very special man, Mr. Greg Navarro. We would like to remember him for three important things. The first of which, Mr. Greg Navarro was the partner of BCYF, and he was the man instrumental in bringing together Deloitte for the CSR Youth Awards. But more importantly, he was a good person, a good friend to the whole of BCYF and the board. Very youthful. 
I know that a lot of you here, you've come in your suits, you've come in your best attire, but tonight should really be all about being joyful and happy and grateful. So I want you to look at your seatmate, look to the person to your left, and try to see if he or she espouses great characteristics of youthfulness. Yes? Yes? <laughs> now look to the person to your right and see if this person is an inspiration of youthfulness. Of course! This is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's great how when we bring together people from BCYF and all of our, all of our dear friends, we have a lot of good things going on. And so for tonight, I'd like to call on three very important gentlemen who will be welcoming all of you. Usually for welcoming remarks, there's only one person. But because you are all very, very important, some of you have traveled all the way from up north and perhaps even outside the Philippines, three gentlemen will welcome you. So are you ready to be welcomed? <laughs> I would like to call on the first gentleman, the CEO of Deloitte Philippines, Attorney Frederick Landicho. Good evening, everyone. I hope you will have a good time. This is actually our culture supporting this event, and uh, we're very happy to support this CSR Youth Award that recognizes talented young people who are practicing good citizenship, social responsibility, and sustainability. And uh, with that, uh, th these are very talented young people that, who make some impact uh, to their communities. And talking about making an impact, we at Deloitte has a purpose, and that is to make an impact that matters. We make an impact that matters to our clients, to our people, and to our community as well. Our CSR activities are well designed to keep the spirit of volunteerism alive and burning among our young people. Uh, there is a key date in Deloitte, that, which is the fourth Friday every August, where the, all Deloitte offices across the globe take time off and we, perform a whole day, we spend the whole day doing CSR activities. We call it Impact Day. I would say that our people are fortunate for having Deloitte providing them with a platform and resources to do their CSR activities and wherein they can continue to do their voluntary and acts. But our finalists here today, tonight, I would say that they are living proof of people who really practice citizen, good citizenship, social responsibility and sustainability, and they prove to us that despite the limited resources that they have, it is not a hindrance to practice good uh, CSR. So, uh, these young people, uh, they chose to make uh, they choose to make a difference in the world uh, to make a uh, better change in the world they choose hope over indifference they are truly inspiring the work that they do uh, the noble and selfless work that they do are a reward by and end of itself and we are truly privileged to be part of your journey so on behalf of the Red Philippines, together with my partners, some of them are here tonight. Uh, I wish you, I wish to congratulate each one of you for making this far. And uh, I cannot wait to see uh, for you to continue to spread your wings and uh, do more good things to our community and to our nation as a whole. Again, good evening and congratulations to our finalists. Thank you very much, Attorney Landicho. The second gentleman I will be calling on is the chair of the CSR committee and the member of the Management Association of the Philippines. Let's all welcome Mr. Edgardo C. Amistad. Good evening to everybody, to uh, the members of the board of BCYF, to uh, the officers and staff of uh, Deloitte, 
to uh, the guests, the finalists and awardees of uh, the CSR Youth Awards. Uh, good evening to, again, to all of us. Uh, most of the time, I'm uh, asked by Tony to do some chores for BCYF. <laughs> I think that's uh, one of the uh, responsibilities for being a uh, director or trustee of BCYF. But anyway, I'm happy to oblige. And uh, of course, I'm happy to be here. The reason why I'm one of the welcoming uh, officials is because uh, I'm the chair of the uh, pre pre judging of the uh, of the finalists. No, so before they, the the uh, finalists were uh, submitted for final judging, kami yung screening committee. You know, matarbaho actually. <laughs> and uh, as always, I think this is the third time that I've been involved in the CSR Youth Awards. The first time as member, the judging uh, committee. Second as chair, the uh, screening committee. And this year also as uh, chair of the screening committee. So, siguro next year, iba na ang chair. So, pwede na akong uh, <laughs> ma ma graduate. No? Uh, as mentioned, I'm, I'm the chair of, of the CSR Committee of uh, MAP, Management Association of the Philippines. I've been the chair of the League of Poor Paid Foundations. I've been chair of the ASEAN CSR Network. So many hats as uh, uh, very much involved with uh, CSR. But in reality, I, I became involved with CSR only in my later age. But uh, in my youth, even in my, uh, in my 40s, I was not that involved with GSR. That's why I am impressed with the finalists dito sa ating awards, no? Even students, uh, fresh graduates, very active in CSR. And that's something that is uh, good for the country. And uh, because of that, uh, it's al I'm always proud to be part of this uh, awarding uh, uh, ceremony. So to uh, all of uh, those that will uh, 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 get their awards later tonight, congratulations. And uh, with you out there, I think the Philippines has a uh, better chance of uh, moving up in the ladder of uh, progressive uh, nations. Again, uh, good evening and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ed Amistad. As you can see, the people who are standing here in front of you, they're not just really here because of their titles, but they're really here in front of you because they work really hard for the foundation. So again, we'd like to thank the gentleman, Attorney Landicho and Mr. Ed Amistad. And of course, the third gentleman, see, there's one more. The third gentleman I'll be calling is not the last to be speaking tonight, but he is the man responsible for many of these wonderful projects that we have all together. Let's welcome the chairman of the Benita and Catalina Yap Foundation, Mr. Antonio S. Yap. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Seven and a half years ago, my board and I were talking about the need for awards. By then, the foundation had been around for about more than 70, uh, about 17 years. I have been fighting against giving awards <laughs> because I said there's so many awards. And uh, after thinking about it, we decided that perhaps it was important to identify people who we thought could be exemplars, especially people like us who make mistakes, who screw up, and yet through all the hardships somehow managed to, if we don't do good, at least we attempt to do good. With that in mind, I uh, 
I used to see Greg in many organizations. So one day, naglakas loob ako, and I introduced myself to him, and I said, what do you think about the idea of youth CSR, something that uh, Dr. Roman and I uh, used to discuss because everybody tells me there's no such thing as youth CSR. I think for some of us, uh, maybe youth CSR is more real than many people realize. So it was an easy conversation. Less than 30 minutes, he said, let's do it. I said, what do you mean? No, no, I want to co-present. Oh, you don't want to be a partner? No, no, no. Let's make this as a, as a serious partnership. So it's a BCY project, but co-presented by Deloitte. And I said, you're sure? I said, OK. And then after a year, we launched the award. That was more than four years ago. The award is an interesting one because we have a different definition for CSR. We call it 3.0, and we say our CSR is citizenship, sustainability, and social responsibility. I remember when we launched it, I was asked if I could go to ANC. I, I'm not a media person, but I agreed. I did not know they would interview me for one hour. My message, uh, when I was asked to summarize at the end, was simple. I said, anyone who cannot obey traffic rules, pay taxes, submit things on time, has no business being a volunteer. Your objective in life is to take care of yourself, your family, your filthy to God, and then your other responsibilities before you do anything CSR. That was my simple message. I did not realize that today we will have four awards involving many, many things. To me, the significance of today goes beyond these awards. Beginning December 1, we will start our one-year celebration of our 25th anniversary. Our fiscal year is December 1 to November 30. Our Innovation Award is supposed to be every February. Our Developmental Social Enterprise Award is supposed to be every July. And then we're supposed to have, as the highlight, our CSR Youth Awards every September. But this year, during our week, this is our anniversary week. On purpose, I chose November 30 because I've always thought, even when I started volunteering 42 years ago, that there is a hero in every person, even those like us who are imperfect. And so I said, let us celebrate our anniversary every last week of November with the highlight around November 30. No one has an excuse about attending because it's a holiday. So if they don't attend, they don't want to engage with us, and that's fine. So today, we are celebrating the launch of the silver anniversary of BCYF through these four CSR Youth Awards. Tomorrow, we will have the awards night for our national search for hometown heroes here at Tower Club also. On Wednesday, we will have the fourth Developmental Social Enterprise Awards here at Tower Club also. And to cap it off, on Thursday, we will have the ballroom of the Makati Shang as the venue for our Innovation Awards. These four in total is the launching pad, if you like, of our silver anniversary, which will see activities every single month. Tw five years ago, when we celebrated our 20th, people asked me, how come whenever you have an anniversary, all you have is a recollection and mass? And we have an exchange gift of 300 pesos. And I said, because I want to remember why we're doing this. And the recollection is a good time to reflect, even only for a few hours, with a mass. The mass is always uh, celebrated by the chairman of our advisory council, Archbishop Aniceto, who unfortunately cannot come tonight. He called me about three hours ago, and he said, well, you know how priests are. They have 
sudden obligations that they cannot avoid. And I said, no problem. No problem. I have uh, Mrs. Rivera there, who is the head of our community service. Community service in our small school includes BCY Foundation. This foundation is under her. Um, anyway, that is the celebration. This is my short welcome. I thank all of you for coming. And I hope that after the dinner, that is when you will engage with us. Demand of us what you like. So before I end, I want to thank Deloitte for being our partner. Eric has been a wonderful surprise for me. Thank you for your support. But I want to recognize the other person who made this possible. There's a young lady here who made this possible. Jojo, where are you? Without Jojo, there is no CSR Youth Awards because 70% of the meetings with, with Greg were by her. I, I just couldn't attend to all of it. She was the one who kept meeting with Greg regularly. They formulated what is the CSR Youth Awards, that young lady over there. Hindi ko alam na maganda pala siya. Alam ko lang, she was this top student from St. Co who was a candidate for the TOSP when I met her, and who volunteered left and right, and got me to agree to have a concert with groups like Up Dharma Down, who I had no idea <laughs> who they were, <laughs> it turns out. And she calls it her Yapak Mo Yakapko event, which I thought that's a wonderful way to describe our CSR Youth Awards. Welcome, and let's enjoy the evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony Yap. And he said something that's very, very striking and very timely for this whole week of celebration. And I guess for the rest of our lives, he said, there is a hero in every person. Do you agree with that? Yes. Do you think there's a hero inside all of you? I think just you coming here really shows that there is a hero in all of us and that there's so much hope in the coming months and years for us here in the world. Once again, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Renelin Tan Castillejos. And for me, the Youth Awards is something that's very, very special. For 12 years, I worked in the youth nonprofit called World Youth Alliance. And so for 12 years, I was working with a lot of young people ages 10 to 30 years old. And for some of them, they couldn't understand why, in spite of all the talent that they have, sometimes they just can't make it into the real world. And so when I met Sir Tony with BCYF Foundation, I was really struck by how great the values they're espousing when it comes to supporting young people in the real sense. You know how some people will tell you, oh, I support you, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. With Sir Tony, it's very different. If you want to volunteer for Sir Tony, there's just one thing for sure he will make you work. It's because if you really say that you want to volunteer, you have to be committed to that. And you have to really say that, okay, if I want to serve my country, every little responsibility I need or I say yes to, I should be able to do. And so now it's been four years that the Youth Awards have been here. I'm not in the youth nonprofit sector anymore. I now work in with my husband in our business, but I still bring with me the values that um, BCYF just really wants to espouse. CSR, which is citizenship, sustainability, and social responsibility. So once again, I really just would like to thank you. Even if you're working in the nonprofit sector, even or you're not working with the youth, just by being a human being, I think it's all a responsibility to be active in CSR. So I'd like to thank you all for being here. And the next person I'd like to call is the woman who has been instrumental in making sure that the CSR Youth Awards continues to this day. Let's all warmly welcome the Deputy Executive Director of CSR, Ms. Joanna L. Armenta. Good evening, everyone. So, hindi na po ako mag-introduce ng sarili ko dahil pinakilala na ako ni Sir Tony. 
Um, actually, um, I can call CSR Youth Awards as my baby. Because, <laughs> well, I get emotional when I, when I talk about it. Because before I leave, this is the last. Um, before I leave BCYF, this is really the last um, project that I did. And sa tama yung sabi ni Sir Tony, actually, um, for your information, Miss Loida and the Deloitte family, uh, there was never a meeting that I had with Sir Greg na hindi siya excited about this event, this project. And I really, really admire his passion. Kasi si Sir, alam na alam ko na na talagang very committed and passionate si Sir Tony. But yun, parang kasi... When when I, I met him, very corporate yung dating ni Sir Greg. And I was so surprised na sobrang dedicated siya sa event na to, sa awards na to, na sobrang na-inspire ako. Na kahit pala yung mga tao sa corporate world, they can really be transformed and be into this kind of um, uh, volunteer work na walang bayad, but they all give their best to do these things for the country. And I'm so amazed by that. So ngayon po, I'm um, going to just have a brief... Uh, um, intro, um, no, brief talk about the CSR Youth Awards. So, okay. So as yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Antonio Yap, the chairman of BCYF, and Sir Greg had series of meetings, and actually, kami talaga ni Sir Greg yung may series of meetings. <laughs> they have several busy si Sir Tony. So we had a uh, we had long conversation over the phone, um, personal, face to face. So yeah, they had a meeting and they come up with this award. And we had this tagline four years ago. Na ngayon na pa din. So it's it's to recognize youth role models in citizenship, sustainability, and social responsibility. So we had partners like um, Management Association of the Philippines, represented by Mr. Ed Amistad. Uh, the chair of CSR Committee of MAP. Partnership with National Youth Commission, um, represented by Mr. G.B. Gores, the sec sectoral representative of youth and students of NYC. And also we had a partnership with Junior Chamber International Makati, represented by the former president of JCI Makati, si At uh, Attorney Carlo Ibanez. And also we had a partnership with ISEC Philippines. So let me um, just reiterate the past awardees of CSRYA. So in 2015, Ms. Clarissa Delgado um, teach for the Philippines Young Professional Category. So she won for the Young Professional Category. So And also for the Student Category, we had Mako Ravan. So I would like to recognize Mr. Mako. He's over there. Yun po. I am mad. That, that time, student pa siya. So he won in 2015. Next. In 2016, awardee Mr. R.C. Maliari. Wala po siya dito, unfortunately. Um, he started this project called Silid Aralan Incorporated for Young Professional Category. And then CSRY 2017 awardees. For student category, we have Primitivo the Third Dragandang from Mindanao. Move This World Philippines. And uh, you happy events founder, Mr. Harvey Uy de Baron, for Young Professional Category. And for this uh, year, actually, Mar Bartolome, um, a colleague from BCYF, uh, designed this logo, a beautiful logo. So I would just like to explain a little bit of that. So yung CSR, uh, yung man po um, in the middle is representing um, a CSR, a, a based CSR. So meaning parang uh, we're, we're telling people that CSR, if you're leaving CSR 3.0, you'll have a good life. And then the six stars po represents the six, uh, well, three people and the three organizations that came up with this awards that became the stars of this, um, primar this project primarily. So it's Mr. Greg Navarro, Sir Tony, me, and then Deloitte, BCYF, and MAP, these organizations. So I would like, uh, this is CSRY 2018 nominees, and they are here. I would like to recognize um, each and every one of them. Please stand when your name is called. Um, first, we have Mr. Francisco Gatdula from all the way from Cebu, University San Jose Recoletos. And then with, with him, a student, Miss Ilona Albo, there, from University San Jose de Coletos. And then we have Mr. Edmar Elcarte from Alliance of Young Nurse Leaders and Advocates. 
And then we have we have Zafaria Lauren Orero from De La Salle University, a student as well from Paralegal Volunteers Organization. We also have Mr. Lowell Solaya, all the way from Bicol, um, the founder of Pilar Reading Center. We also have Ms. Charlene Hazel Cotan, the founder, co-founder of Good Food Community. Ms. Trisha Topasho from Simbahang Lingkod ng Bayan. We also have Ms. Bay Rohaniza Hani Sumnad Usman from Teach Peace, Build Peace Movement. Mr. Alan Ortiz from Elizabeth Seton School. And last but not the least, Mr. Eliseo Yanga III from Civil Service Commission. So ladies and gentlemen, these are 2018 CSR Youth Awards nominees. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you so much, Jojo, for introducing us to the nominees. It's great to know where they're all situated so that during dinner time, if you'd like to talk to someone or you'd like to interview them, just feel free because this Youth Award shouldn't be a stiff event. It's really here just for people to, to learn from each other and to celebrate all of these achievements from the youth. And so now is the moment you've all been waiting for. We will have our dinner together with a networking. So with that, I'd like to now open the floor for delicious food. And towards, in, in a few minutes, while you're eating, I'll also be calling on our distinguished speakers for their own respective talks. So we will have that very shortly. So once again, dinner is served. Bon appetit. As you enjoy your dinner, we will be serenaded by the SACT alumni, Miss Crystal Lacuesta. I've been so many places in my life and time. I've sung a lot of songs and made some bad rhymes. I've acted at my love in stages with 10,000 people watching.
stood with hold in my hand. You came out in front and I was hiding. But now I'm so much better. And if my words don't come together, and listen to the melody, cause my love. you're having a good dinner and at this point I'd like to just call your attention back to the stage because I will be introducing our two very important keynote speakers they will be sharing about two different topics that will be inspiring not just for the youth awardees here but I think for everyone in general our first keynote speaker will talk about serving the country everyone's responsibility. I'd like to introduce to you a visiting professor at Halu Oleo University in Indonesia. He is also a professor at De La Salle College of St. Benilde, Jose Rizal University, and the University of Mindanao. Let's all give a warm welcome to Dr. Emiliano Hudtohan. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the audience tonight is uh, daunting because Dean Huico is there, my former dean. Uh, Dr. Jerusalem, my current uh, chair at JRU. And uh, Tony Yap was a colleague at the De La Salle uh, Brothers and student. But uh, I always say, the student becomes greater than the teacher. So uh, without any further ado, because I think we're under time uh, uh, constraint, um, I start from the Constitution of 1987, which says, every Filipino citizen is asked to uphold this Constitution, obey the laws of the land, pay taxes and duties, and to cooperate with the duly constituted authorities in the attainment and preservation of a just and orderly society. To our Benita Catalino Ya Foundation CSR Youth Awardees, the Constitution is very specific on what you, your personal responsibilities are, attainment and preservation of a just and orderly society. I am very sure if Mr. and Mrs. Catalino Yap are here, we're here today, they will likewise remind us to continue their personal responsibility to work for a just and orderly society. In Confucian tradition, because of the Yap family has Chinese roots, this calls for harmony in Philippine society. This is a daunting task because we live in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous society. In a great period of change, which started in 1987, and it is expected to end in 2023. Nemeth, a 21st century author, elevates responsibility, responsibility to that of having a privilege. For her, responsibility should not be a burden. We must not respond and react from, a fe from fear and consider it a burden, an obligation. Privilege includes freedom, opportunity, and benefits. It is a privilege to be a citizen of the Philippines 
and to be able to serve this country and to serve God. Unfortunately, De La Salle University, where I come from, it says serve God and country. But the De La Salle brothers in Singapore says serve country and God. And look at where Singapore is. Each of us must believe in the power of one, then graduate to the 80-20 effectiveness paradigm so that the statistical power of the square root of 1% will defy the elusive and real democratic majority of 50% plus one, which is consensus. The butterfly effect of the power of one person ultimately results to the power of many. As Catholics, we must accept that we are divine. Somebody may call me heretic here. <laughs> Make, because we are made to the image and likeness of our God. The Jesuit Tehar de Chardin says, we are spiritual beings with human activities. As members of civil society, we must relate with the business and government sectors. When the social responsibility of the three sectors converges, it creates a synergistic impact on the lives of every Filipino. But business and government have an overwhelming presence vis-a-vis -vis individuals in civil society who are relatively less organized in driving their personal agenda. Through BCYF, Chairman Tony Yap, personal responsibility has been promoted and it is a trend in social responsibility which is not driven by business nor by the government. As a Filipino Lasallian and former aspirant of the De La Salle brothers, Tony is a product of nature and nurture. His Chinese Filipino DNA from Benita and Catalino and has been nurtured from the ideals of St. Lasalle's faith reflection, zeal action for community and society common good. The journey towards personal responsi social responsibility as service our country and our patriotic duty has been overshadowed by the business sector that has been promoting corporate social responsibility seemingly practiced in the mid of 19. 69, as Dr. Roman has, I quote him from, his, from the book. Corporate social responsibility is philanthropic and voluntary. It has evolved into shared social values and then social initiatives promoted and practiced by Western corporation, as shown in the image. Can you just keep on moving until the uh, philanthropic CSR? Figure five shows that beyond philanthropic endeavors that provide short-term impact on the community, corporations are encouraged to directly involve themselves in sustainable community projects. In this new development, CSR is sustainable because it has graduated from giving away fish to teaching the community how to fish. I summarized the framework on, in terms of uh, involvement to, for high uh, philanthropic and then beneficiaries. There is a new development which is now called mandated CSR. For the Westerners and for us who have been trained in democratic uh, uh, institutions, mandated CSR sounds weird. How can it be voluntary when it is mandated? But in China, mandated CSR was promulgated in 2013. It is part of the larger history-making transformation now occurring throughout China, as the Chinese government seeks to reorient massive Chinese economy into a more market-based economy, as well as raise China's global economic and political clout as it carries its economic reforms. The Chinese socialist responsibility took a turn to what is now mandated CSR. This was taking place with Chinese, in China at the dawn of Mao Zedong, 
during the Great Leap Forward and up till now, the capitalist market was developed in China by embracing the new market. India and Indonesia are following the same. Why? Because of the enormous problem with regards to poverty. Government must take action. In the Philippines, the decade of the continuous improvement in 1990s shows that, according to Dr. Roman, the business sector acknowledged its role in developing society through good corporate citizenship. In the same decade, founder Tony Yap started his seminal advocacy for personal social responsibility 25 years ago when he established the Benita Catalino Yap Foundation. To my mind, the PSR values are rooted in the concept of Confucian self. From the self, to the family, to community, to the country, and to the whole world. And Confucian, Confucius believed in five human relationships. Hierarchical society for the self to be in harmony with through friendship, marriage, siblings, paternity, and governance. So historically, Archie Carroll gave birth to philanthropic CSR in 1999. China gave birth to mandated CSR in 2013. But in the Philippines, Chairman Antonio Yap gave birth to personal social responsibility, PSR, in 1993, pioneering social responsibility concept representing society's key role in promoting good and responsible citizenship. Yap, Mr. Yap, surfaces and manifests his personal responsibility rooted in Confucian hierarchy maxim, which underscores the fundamental role of the individual in nation building. The student of Confucius says, If people want to be great in the world, they should have the ability to rule and be responsible for a country well. If they want to, be, to have the ability to take responsibility for a country well, they should have the ability to take responsibility for managing the relationship of a big family well. If people want to manage the relationship of family well, they should have the ability to take responsibility to manage and controlling themselves well. So responsibility begins with the self. The core of Filipino values in CSR can be found in kagandahang loob, etc. Through pagsasaloob, through pagsalinaw, and then to be able to have that cycle. But this is a long forgotten Filipino values because we do not pay attention to our loob. We pay attention so much to the labas. Mas magaling tayo sa panlabas. But we have to reflect what is from the inside. In the same vein, the, uh, through, is Miss Paner here? Because I took this from her writing. Uh, the Japanese Ikigai paradigm was used by May Paner in 2017 of BCYF. She said, practice personal social responsibility 3.0. It begins with yourself. Thus, in turn, begin from knowing yourself. The key to maintain a lifelong search to find your ikigai, your purpose. When you do that, you will be able to practice critical, creative change. Our personal responsibility is rooted in our divinity. And it is a variant of Tehardi Chardin's pronouncement that we are spiritual beings. So if the self is there, how do you find the me in we? It's not going to be all me. It has to include. So I ask, how do you find your, the me in we? Visually, the letter M can be inverted to a W. So the me becomes we. But psychologically, or whatever it is, the me, our inside, has to reach out to the world outside. Christian Fowler, Christian and Fowler explained that the inner, our inner desire and drive for con connectiveness and reasons why social media has created a new consciousness never before experienced. The phenomenon 
is we are connected through a surprising power of social network and how these networks shape our lives. We use digital technology for common good, then we become homo deus, a superhuman with artificial intelligence, according to futurist writer Harari in his book, 2016. So here you see the original traditional man and God touching. The present and the future is moving towards man and machine touching. So my question is, okay, how will our leaders of tomorrow deal with the reality of technology of tomorrow? How can our consciousness continue to make us human and not behave like as we dance? You see the young people dance, it's so mechanistic. It's imitating the robots without us knowing it. <laughs> okay. Filipino PSR advocates and practitioner is a product of nature and nurture. Internally, our DNA comes from our long tradition of rootedness in our cultural heritage, be that Chinese, Indonesian, or otherwise. Extremely, externally, we are a product of a combination of uh, influences from our family, school, society, business, and government. And in the 21st century, we are becoming a product of technology. So in 2073, 50 years of BCYF, the Golden Jubilee, the peace our advocate and practitioners will be serving the Philippines not only as homo sapiens, but, and do not be surprised, as homo deus. By, seven, by 2073, at the golden anniversary of BCYF, the question I ask for our youth award is then would be, can we exist and serve in an era of machines? My conclusion is this. In America, Archie Carroll gave birth to a philanthropic CSR in 1999. China gave birth to a mandated CSR in 2023. In the Philippines, Chairman Antonio Yap gave birth to personal social responsibility in 1993 when he established the foundation. Metaphysically, what Tony thought materialized, what he visualized also become a reality. He started 25 years ago when he established BCYF in honor of his dearest mom and dad whose familial DNA continues to flow in him and to all of those who are serving BCYF. His mom and dad, as metaphysical writer says, they are always communicating in stranger than fiction ways. I repeat that. The mom and dad of Tony are communicating to us here and now without us knowing it, but they are. Okay. So let us listen to them with our hearts to fulfill BCYF's vision to help the Philippines and the rest of Asia by develop, develop in a manner which respects the individual's dignity and contribution by becoming, coming up with innovative social solution. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Emiliano Hudtohan. Thank you also for reminding us that in order for us to serve our country, we need to be responsible for our family and ultimately ourselves, because it all starts from us. And so the next speaker, the next keynote speaker I will be calling on, will talk about Tony and my journey from CSR to PSR. He is a professor at the Asian Institute of Management. Let's all give a warm welcome to Dr. Francisco L. Roman. Uh, thank you and good evening. Uh, I am personally delighted to be here because um, in a way, if uh, it, it hadn't been for Tony, I would still be in CSR. So he got me involved in PSR, which we'll talk about a little bit. And I'm also delighted to be here because it's a chance to meet the youth. Uh, 
when you get to be my age, everybody is either retired or in the grave. Uh, so at least here I can see some of the younger people. Uh, I consider Tony young. Uh, but um, I'm supposed to give a reflection about the journey. The trouble with journeys is they move from the past to the you know, present and then the future. But our audience here is kind of bimodal, very young and old. And uh, young, young people like to hear about the future because they have a short past and a long future. On the other hand, people like me, the old people, like to talk about the past because we have a long past and a short future. <laughs> so I'd like to kind of balance that off. And uh, there, are, there are three points that I'd like to make. Um, so this journey is going to talk obviously about the past and where we are now, but I'm going to try to spend a little bit more time on the future because I think that's what the, the youth are interested in. So I've got three points uh, to make, um, and I'll try to make them fairly brief. Uh, the f one important point is that I'm an academic, and the problem is we, know under we understand things in hindsight. You know, we study this and we say, oh, this was the decade of X, this was the decade of Y. Um, but in fact, the real world is a little bit complicated. In one sense, uh, the other reason that I'm grateful to Tony is he introduced me to someone you may know, a, a gentleman named Wayne Visser. And he was the one who popularized CSR 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. But again, that's an academician talking. Neither he nor I talked about PSR, and that's why Tony decided to evolve that, uh, that concept of PSR, which, which again, I'll, I'll get to in a, in a little while. But one of the things I think we want to point out is that as, a, as an academician, it's easy to say, well, this was the decade of personal relation, public relations. This was the decade of community relations. Uh, this was the decade of multi-stakeholder engagement, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll always look back. But in, in fact, the real world is, is, is a bit messy. Um, there are many overlaps. I mean, even while you're doing what you would think is CSR, there's a great deal of public relations involved. Um, Right now in AIM, we're, we're looking at uh, disasters, both man-made and uh, natural. I was talking to my colleague. There's uh, Yolanda, which is a natural disaster, and there's Marawi, which is a man-made disaster. And we're studying both, and we're looking at how, where can social responsibility exist there. And it's obvious that when a company does good things, it's also got PR involved. So it's very difficult to separate the two, and academicians like to do it, but there's no point in our doing it, because that's how the real world operates. There are also um, pendulums in terms of how CSR evolves. Um, and I'll talk about it in the third point, but sometimes CSR is very internal oriented, sometimes CSR is very external oriented. I'll give an example in, in a little while. So there are overlaps, there are pendulums, and there are cycles. Uh, sometimes, um, in good times, there's a lot of CSR. Uh, in bad times, whether you like it or not, together with the advertising budget and other things, they cut back on CSR. So it's, w when we talk about it, it seems very clear. Um, but in the real world, it's not that clear. Uh, but, and, and the point I wanted to make is exactly the point my, uh, the previous speaker made, that actually personal uh, social responsibility began in the decade of when? When was that, Dr. Tupon? About the 90s, when Tony set it up, early 90s? So you see, it's been going around for a while. It's only now that it's getting traction. And again, partly because, like I said, the real world is messy. Uh, we didn't recognize its importance uh, until now. So the, the first thing is that um, we have to understand what is going on, and we have to understand how things are working. But the, the other point, uh, the, this gets me to the next point, uh, talking more about personal, CS, uh, personal social responsibility. Um, I want, you have to start fairly young, and I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a different example. Um, Tony and I are involved in a project on STEM, uh, science, technology, but I'm not, I'm not going to go into that project. It's a little bit complicated. Yeah, there's a lot of work on it. It's a project report. I'm going to just give you two images. Um, I don't know, how many of you have gone to uh, Greenbelt during lunchtime, where you see all of these kids? lined up going to Rapunzel. Uh, how many of you have seen it? You know, there are like hordes of them. Uh, they, they, they're watching Rapunzel. And you, you know, there's this somebody with number one, there's a school name, number two, another school name, different uniforms. Uh, and OK, that's good. I think it's good for them to get creative. But I'll give you a different example 
Uh, I've been teaching in Nagoya for the last three years, and purely by accident, I went into the Museum of Science that Nagoya has. Uh, yeah, that Nagoya has. It's the third largest city. And uh, they, that, that museum is dedicated to the youth learning engineering and math. And it was in Japanese, obviously. But you know, when I was looking at it, they were trying to, I don't, how many of you here remember something called the Fibonacci ratio? It's a theorem that, that, that describes the, the ratio. But anyway, these kids were learning it intuitively. Uh, these kids were t learning physics intuitively. Of course, it was in Japanese, but I, I could understand what they were doing, and I could see how much uh, they, had, uh, they had learned. And it struck me that you know, the Philippines has a long way to go in building not just the creative arts, which are important, but also engineering and science. In the same way, we have a long way to go in building uh, personal CSR. We've got to start early with the youth. Uh, it, uh, with, with apologies to our business and corporate people, it's, it's difficult to, move to, get, to get them to think about personal CSR when they get brainwashed by the corporation. By the way, I use brainwash in the good sense of the word. I mean, they have budgets, they have resources, they have programs. So if you're a young person who's not sure about what he wants, he's going to embrace it. But I think what we're missing out is the ability for young people to come up with their own ideas and make themselves heard. Um, I, I've observed also in... Um, I observed also in um, corporations that the CSR managers are becoming younger and younger. I think that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, but anyway, the point I wanted to make is that in, our, in the journey that, we, that Tony and I took, I was very much brainwashed into CSR. Uh, that was how it worked. That was what I was familiar with. That was what the people I was talking to were about. Uh, every year we have an annual award on CSR, et cetera, et cetera. So it's only when I realized when I met that, that Tony and I got together, two things happened. One is I realized that there's an entire dimension to CSR which I'm missing, which is the youth. The second thing I realized is that the youth actually have something to say. <laughs> uh, and uh, for a while, in two years ago, I was doing work in the University of Mindanao, in San Carlos, and in UP Los Baños. In other words, not the Ateneo, La Salle, Makati crowd, but there's where we got a chance to see how they were doing. And there's where I understood that there's so much that they can do. It's just that they're not recognized. And partly, they, they don't have a chance. If, if, you, if you join a company, basically, they have their own CSR programs in place. Performance metrics are based on the CSR. So I don't think they get a chance to voice their, 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 their interests and their priorities. Um, until they, until they rise through the ladder, uh, which is also the, the, uh, the benefit. And that's why I think uh, when, um, whoops, sorry, uh, Greg, you know, no, not Greg, Ooh, wait, Frederico, <laughs> Fred? Eric. Eric. So when Eric, sorry, when Eric mentioned this thing about what, what they're doing, um, you know, to, get, to, get, to make an impact, to get people's voices heard, I think this is an opportunity for the youth to have their say and, and to be able to listen to them. Because I think it's important that uh, uh, CSR is not just for us old timers. It's for the people who are going to make a difference in the future. Uh, that, that's, so that's the, that's the third thing about this journey. Again, my thanks to Tony. I wouldn't have been able to do this. Two, I got a network, yeah, the people that he talks to. Um, so he, he, through him, I've, I've, we've, I've, I've, I've done conferences in, in UP, in, uh, in, in, in other places, I, I've, gone, I've, I've gone to Pampanga. Uh, I'm, pure, I'm, I, 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 I'm a southerner, I'm from Laguna, so going to Pampanga is a, is a major effort. <laughs> All that traffic. <laughs> uh, you know, getting to the highway, once you get to the highway, you're okay. So, th so th just to repeat, one, this is about the journey. I've talked a little bit about the past. Um, two, uh, the journey is a, is a, is a complicated one. It's not, it, in hindsight, we can say that this is the decade of public relations, this is the decade of multi-stakeholder engagement, but, but it's nice to know that things are moving even faster than academicians can look at it. The third thing is a personal social responsibility. Like, like science and technology, you've got to start them young, get them early and enthusiastic about it. And one of the things, for example, that we noticed in, in talking about the, the youth is um, they, are, they really are environmentally conscious. They just don't know what to do about it, but they really are conscious about the environment. Uh, they're conscious about, um, uh, human rights is a tricky word. <laughs> they're conscious about 
a level playing field for people. Because they're looking from, from their point of view. I want to be able to do as much as I can when I leave this, when I leave college and I start having a life. So they're concerned about developing a level playing field, about equity. And these are the things I think that the young people are, are, are concerned about. Uh, of course, how would I know? I'm 70 years old. Uh, whoops, let me just check. Uh, sorry. Okay, yes, no, I should be ending. Uh, I have my timer here. <laughs> the, the fourth and final point, uh, um, and here we now talk about the future. Uh, it, it's interesting because um, I think the way we're going to go is corporations are now both external and internally inter inward looking. Uh, corporations are now external looking for two reasons. One, the national government has priorities, education, uh, health, and now the disasters are becoming the new normal, and corporations have to play their role as good corporate citizens. So they're looking at it externally. However, corporations are looking at it internally. They're very much concerned now with health and wellness. Um, it's, of course, there, it's, there's, it's, they're very, what's the word? They're very selfish about it because uh, this, this is data from the United States. Uh, the, the issue of chronic diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, that's affecting productivity. And so that uh, m many of corporations are now looking inwards and saying we have to improve the, the health and wellness and well-being of, um, of our employees because they are, they're the best example of corporate social responsibility. Uh, also, the, I'm doing some research uh, on something called presentism. I've mentioned this to Tony. Uh, so what is, what, what is presentism? You're physically in your office, but you're not productive. <laughs> no, no, think about it. Your poor secretary, has to, who, who is a single mother, has to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, prepare for it in order to be able to get to work at 8 o'clock. And very often, by the time she gets there to sit down, she's physically there, but she's simply not uh, productive enough. Uh, do you remember this old this, this ad about, uh, in, in the pharmaceutical industry about, is it Enervon, something like, because I cannot afford to, to be sick? Remember, the, what's, the, what's the Tagalog phrase? <laughs> so, you know, that's, 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 the, that's the idea of presentism. It's, it's not just health. And, and it affects the youth. I mean, before we can, we can, we can rise up and start uh, buying BMWs, we've got to go through the MRT. Uh, so that's one of the internal issues. External issues, and let, let me end very quickly now. Uh, the external issues is one, uh, you can Google this. I, I, there's something now called the beneficial corporation and the B corporation. You can, you can look at it in Google. It's basically an attempt to develop a standard of good housekeeping, and you can register for it. It's like, like, the, go, it's like the global scorecard in corporate governance that the ICD has. So that's one of the things that's happening. The other thing that's been happening is um, corporate social responsibility among corporations is now moving to social innovation. However, I think the youth are the ones who are going to propel uh, social innovation through social entrepreneurship. Uh, I think many of the awardees we have are also engaged in social entrepreneurship. And uh, the good thing about them is they don't have the baggage that corporations have. It's not that easy for a corporation to, to seed money for social entrepreneurship. And that's why the awards that, the, the, that Deloitte has and the initiatives that, uh, the, that happen in, a, in, in, in some of the awardees provide us with good material and give us hope that the youth is actually doing well without us getting in the way. And I think maybe that's, that's the main message, to, especially among the millenn millennials. Uh, let them be able to do their own thing because it's their, personal, it's their own personal journey. It's not something that came from mandated by, by somebody else. And so with that in mind, um, let, me, let me conclude and uh, more power to the awardees whom we're going to be hearing from in the next few minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Francisco Roman, for that relevant keynote speech. It made me reflect with how many times I had presentism. 
So I, I'm sure all of us could relate to that because with everything that happens in not just in society, but I guess in our homes, in our offices, there's just so much distraction. And so sometimes you're talking to a person, you might think he is there, but really his or her thoughts are flying. So maybe you can look at your seatmate and try to see if he or she is still with us. Yes? Yes? And so thank you for that. I hope you appreciated the two keynote speeches that we've had through dinner. Let's give them a warm round of applause. Dr. Emiliano Hudtohan and Dr. Francisco L. Roman. Here in BCYF for awardings, it's, it's not just important for us to recognize the individuals who have done so much, but there's always a learning component whenever there's an event organized by BCYF because it's only through learning continuously that we'll be able to move forward and just give the best for our country. And so I hope you're excited. We are now going to the awards proper. There. So I want you to look around the room, try to see, try to remember the, the nominees that were introduced earlier by Ms. Armenta. And so what will happen next is I will be calling on the, the finalists who have made it through the three different categories. But before that, I'd like to acknowledge the fourth CSR Youth Award partners who made this event possible. We'd like to thank Deloitte Philippines. <laughs> Management Association of the Philippines. Group Developers Incorporated. And the National CSR Educators Council. Thank you very, very much for your continued support. And once again, the CSR Youth Awards, we're now in our fourth year, and it's really here to help us recognize outstanding young people who practice CSR 3.0. So let's try to see. Do you all remember what CSR 3.0 is? What is the letter C? I can't hear you. Letter S? And the last letter R? Wow, so you can now be an awardee. <laughs> and so of course, for you to be an awardee, we need to be able to live and breathe CSR 3.0. And for the categories, we will have those three. And once again, I will be reading the finalists. So once I call out your name, please join us here in front. And I will also be calling two people from BCYF, from the support, from our partners as well, to join you on stage for a photo opportunity. And once I finish, we will end the program with the winners. But the winners, of course, will be the last, the last one. We have an intermission before the winners so that there's a little bit suspense. So are you all ready? Are you all ready? Thank you very much. So the first finalist that I will be recognizing is on the category of citizenship. There. So drawing from his personal experiences in having to deal with receiving a suicide note and a loss of a close friend to suicide, our finalist founded the Youth for Mental Health Coalition Incorporated. It is a non-government organization committed to work for a mental resilient and stigma-free community through continuous public education, policy engagement, and facilitation of service delivery programs. It's my honor to introduce the finalist for citizenship, Mr. Raymond John R.J. Nagit. Okay, so we would like to also join us on stage, Mr. Ed Amistad, Attorney Eric Landicho, and 
Mr. Philip Huico. Please join us on stage. And so with that, oh, Miss Jojo has an announcement. Yeah, okay. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Nagit um, is not here because there's a case of mental um, I don't know, suicide, something like case that they're um, they're trying to they're trying to help this kid right now. So right now, so he cannot be here. So um, in behalf of uh, Mr. Raymond John Nagit, I'll just get the I'll just get the certificate in the back. Okay. So you can join. The gentlemen on stage and so see here our finalists are really doing great work even at this time he's not able to join us because he's helping someone who really needs it and we know that suicide is something that a lot of people today young people and old people are um, being confronted with so we'd like to recognize him and his work once again the finalist for citizenship mr raymond john rj nagit Thank you, sir. We can now go down. And everyone is here now. Okay. The second person I will be calling is another finalist in the citizenship category. And I'd like to call... Do, Jojo, do I call the gentleman who will be presenting? Okay. I will be calling Mr. Antonio Yap and Attorney Eric Landicho to be... Oh, same people. Same people, okay. So you see here in BCYF, we need to be surrounded by our mentors. So I will be calling all of you now, correct? <laughs> Same people. So Mr. Ed Amistad, Attorney Landicho. Okay, Mr. Jet, welcome, thank you. And so the second finalist, with her own experience of seeing the war and treading a path that has shown her different forms of conflict and violence experienced by children and the youth, our finalist is the founding president and executive director of Teach Peace, Build Peace movement. It is a nonprofit organization that aims to make every Filipino child and youth a peace builder. Let's all welcome the finalist for citizenship by Rohanisa Sumdad Usman. Thank you very much, by Rohanisa Sumdad Usman. And so, the next person I will be calling on is a student. A student still under the citizenship category. Our finalist is a graduating law student from the De La Salle University College of Law and the current president of the Paralegal Volunteers organization. As a student leader and a paralegal volunteer, she's involved in various advocacies from human rights, children, women, labor, and the environment. Let's all welcome our finalist, Ms. Safaria Lioren B. Oreiro. Once again, congratulations to our finalist, Safaria Lloren B. Oreiro. So we were at the same table earlier and she was talking about school. And so our student leader is really doing a lot of great work. And so thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Now I would like 
to call on the next set of gentlemen who will be helping us for the finalists on sustainability. May I please call on Mr. Louis Ampere, Mr. Benny de Guzman, and Ms. and Attorney Serafin Salvador. Please join us on stage. Once again, it's really very important to have mentors who guide our young leaders. That is why we are getting all of these wonderful people and supporters of BCYF. Please join us on stage. Our fourth finalist is under the category of sustainability. When Super Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines in 2013, our finalist was tasked with working in Samar and Leyte in order to formulate an area development plan for a number of devastated towns. It was there that our finalists met the famous Banig Weavers of Base in Samar. Inspired Base in Samar. Inspired by their stories, he became a Jesuit volunteer and spent a year in the community helping the weavers earn a living from their craft. Let's all warmly welcome our finalist on sustainability, Mr. John Saver Francia. Okay, on behalf of Mr. John Saver Francia, Ms. Jojo Armenta will be accepting the certificate. <laughs> Once again, congratulations to our finalist, John Saver Francia. Our fifth finalist is still under the sustainability category. And believing that the seeds of peace are sown by solidarity, our finalists chose how the way we eat, the way we trade, and the way we produce our food are all intimately linked in a future of hope. Our finalist is a co-founder of the Good Food Community, a social enterprise that connects smallholder farmers with urban consumers through an alternative distribution system called Community Shared Agriculture. Evolving over the last eight years as a response to the multiple crises of our age, which is climate change, shameful waste, and structural injustice, this model offers a way in which we can all be nourished. Let's all welcome the finalist for sustainability, Ms. Charlene Tan. Once again, congratulations to Ms. Charlene Tan. And the last finalist for sustainability, our friends can still stay here because this is still the second category. <laughs> See, they're very, very good when it comes to sustainability. They're sustainability role models. That's why they're here in front of us. And so the sixth finalist, is move, was moved by compassion and uses social media and storytelling to raise funds and collaborate with different experts, organizations, and corporations to train and build the community's capacity for eco-tourism. Our finalist is a strong supporter of Fisher Folk Empowerment. Working with a coastal community in Isla Verde, Batangas to bolster their economic capacity. While the fishers she calls her second family live in waters richest in marine biodiversity in the world, they are still among the Philippines' poorest of the poor, earning an average of only 5,000 pesos or 95 US dollars per household per month. Friends, let's welcome our finalist for sustainability, Ms. Jella Petines.
Congratulations again to our finalist, Ms. Jella Petines. And thank you very much. You can now go down the stage to our mentors. Thank you very much. Last but not the least, I would be calling on our third and last group of mentors and supporters of BCAYF. May I please call on on stage Mr. Antonio Yap and of course, Attorney Eric Landicho back on stage, please. <laughs> our third and final category is on social responsibility. And we have one finalist. <laughs> the finalist is a staunch advocate of inclusion. He has been collaborating with several national and local government agencies, including the Civil Service Commission, the National Council for Disability Affairs, the Department of Education, and several local government units on strategic planning and policy, crafting concerning equal opportunity for human resource management, transformational leadership, and diversity management, among others. Let's all welcome our finalist for social responsibility, Mr. Eliseo Yanga III. Once again, congratulations to Eliseo Yanga III. And we'd like to ask all the finalists and all our mentors to please come back on stage for a photo opportunity. I'd like to call on RJ Nagit, representative, by Rohanisa Sumnad Osman, Safaria Lloren Orero, John Saver Francha, if he's here, Charlene Tan, Jella Petines, and Eliseo Yanga the third. Oh, congratulations. This is John Saver Francia in person. <laughs> We'd also like to call Mr. Louis Ampere, Mr. Benny de Guzman. Who else was called earlier? Please join them on stage. Mom. Mamlita Salvador. Who else? Who else did I forget to call? Attorney Serafin Salvador. No, See here. Oh, Mamlita. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? I for oh, sir, please join us. You're good. <laughs> okay. So if you look on stage, these are the faces. Mr. Huico, Mr. Amistad, Mr. Ed Amistad, please join us. They will not click on the camera. You see, we will be able to um, have a sustainable picture <laughs> with all of you together. There. I'd also like to call our keynote speakers, Dr. Hood Tohan and Dr. Roman, to please join our finalists and mentors on stage. Is Jojo there? Jojo Armenta? One more with Jojo Armenta.
Thank you very, very much to all our finalists. And friends, please take note, these are just the finalists with the mentors. This is not yet the winner, but we equally give them importance because of their great work for the Youth Awards category. And so, as we settle down, I just would like to call on our special friend who will render one song for us before we go on with the awarding ceremony. Once again, let's give a warm welcome to an alumni of the St. Anthony College of Technology, Ms. Crystal Lacuesta. <laughs> Congratulations to the finalists. And here's a song from Region Velasquez. SACT alumni. Such a beautiful voice. And she sang a song that talks about something very important. It's about shining. And I hope that wherever you go, whatever you do, you become a shining star in your own right. And for now, I would like to acknowledge 
three shining stars in this room. They've, they're very special people because they're part of the family that really helped BCYF to have the Youth Awards 2018. And so I would like to acknowledge the presence of the family of Mr. Greg Navarro. Uh, we'd like to ask them to just stand. Ma'am Loida Navarro, the children Sophia and Miko Navarro. Thank you very much for the great work that your dad has given to us. And so now it's our time to know the shining stars for our winners. And at this point, I would like to call back on stage Miss Jojo Armenta for the awarding proper. And as she comes on stage, I would also please like to call Mr. Tony Yap and Attorney Frederick Landicho of Deloitte, Philippines to join us here on stage. <laughs> Attorney Eric Landicho, <laughs> since it's a youth award. <laughs> Thank you, Atherin. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, excited na po ba kayo? Excited na ba kayo? Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, kinakabahan ako. <laughs> ako yung kinakabahan. Okay, our first um, awardee is from the category of citizenship. This, um, this person is an insp inspirational, um, inspiring uh, person for a lot of people, and um, <laughs> all right, the founder of Teach Peace, Build Peace Movement. <laughs> he, she was a finalist before, right? So now she is an awardee. Please welcome Miss Bai Rohaniza Hani Sumnad Usman. So before we call the, the next awardee, I would like to ask Ms. Bai to, to share some, a short message. Ayan. Uh, po. <laughs> Ayun, uh, hindi ko alam kung bakit theory ay ako kung kinakabahan ako, kaya ako na parang naiiyak o, or I, I think ano, Marami, yeah, I think, yeah, overwhelmed. And uh, I just got back from uh, Marawi City last night. Uh, we trained, we did a peace formation session for 200 uh, young people who received a scholarship grant from, uh, from the government in partnership with UNDP. And uh, fresh pasa sa mind ko yung mga stories because these young people are have been affected by the Marawi siege. So kaya siguro rin ganun, parang naiyak ako kasi fresh na fresh pa siya sa akin. And, um, well, that, that's basically what Teach Peace, Build Peace movement is all about. Um, from every year, 30,000 to 40,000 children are, are, have been affected by the armed conflict. Uh, in in the past so many years, ang conflict pusa Mindanao more than 40 years already. But um, just like how Muslims uh, say thanks, we say Alhamdulillah, or which means thanks be to God. So Alhamdulillah for uh, for the gift of life. Alhamdulillah for. Benita and Catalino Yap Foundation for um, strengthening the voice of the youth and empowering more young people to be 
peace heroes in their own ways and spheres of influence. Alhamdulillah for the youth here. Palakpakan naman natin ang lahat po na nandito. For responding to the challenging realities in our country. Um, and uh, this recognition po is not about me. It's, it's for every child, for every young person, uh, for, every, um, for every person who have been a part of the Teach Peace, Build Peace Movement family who have really dedicated themselves para po mag-grow po yung organization. And this award also is for all the younger generations who have been affected by, not just by armed conflict, but by bullying, by uh, discrimination, and different forms of conflict and violence that we have in this country and we have all throughout the world. And this recognition is a message for me and a symbol na pagpatuloy kahit mahirap. Um, it's, it's even more emotional for me because um, my family and I, ourselves, have been affected by the Marawi siege. So, and it's, ganun pala yung pakiramdam. Na if it's, yes, I've been a victim of war when I was seven years old, but now, ngayong, matanda, ngayong uh, tumanda na ako, and I realized it's even more difficult to be in this, in this journey of building a culture of peace, uh, building a culture of nonviolence, if it's happening to your own people, if it's happening to your own province. Ayon. And lalong lalo na, um, I think I'm... I'm, it also it's it's an emotional moment for me because bigla kong naalala yung lola ko. She's now 97 years old, and it's the first time in her entire life that she had to evacuate from her own own house and not stay there for several months. Ayun. And um, lastly, um, this recognition is for is a message and a symbol. Um, doon sa ginagawa po ng Teach Peace Build Peace movement which is building a citizenry of peace heroes, one child, one family, one school, and one community at a time. And pagpapatuloy po namin ang aming, uh, um, our, our strong belief, which is we have to teach peace to build a culture of peace because it is in building a culture of peace that we can create different generations of peace builders. So maraming maraming salamat po and I would like to take this opportunity to greet how Muslims greet one another. It's Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and mercy be upon you all. Salamat po. Thank you, Miss Honey Usman. And now for our last but not the least awardee is in the category of uh, sustainability. May we call once again upstage our chairman of BCYF, Mr. Antonio Yap, and attorney Eric Landicho of uh, Deloitte Philippines <laughs> to give the award to our last star of the night. Drum roll, please. All right. Our last but not the least awardee for tonight is the founder of Batang VIP. Let's all give a round of applause to Miss Marie Angela S. Patines. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the award. Um, well, I don't know what to say. I just came from the island. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just want to say uh, I'm not rich or anything. I'm just average. But I find ways 
because my initiatives are driven by my love for the people because they're, they are genuinely my friends and my second family. So that's, I think, <laughs> what sustains my, my passion for helping them. And I'm committed for, to help them for the rest of my life. Um, and I hope with like, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much for everything. And um, I hope that if you also have initiatives to help other people, to always remember to help from the heart. So thank you. to call back on stage our two winners with their gigantic awards. It really, it really symbolizes the greatness of their hearts. And wow. <laughs> If you can just carry for the photo opportunity. Once again, congratulations by Rohanisa Sumdad Usman, Executive Director of Teach Peace, Build Peace Movement, Hani Sumdad Usman and Ms. Jella Petines. Congratulations. We'd also like to call the finalists back on stage for a photo opportunity with our winners. <laughs> Sir Tony, would you like to say something about the award? I know it's a very uh, special let's award. Let's call the finalists, Mona. Okay, thing. so... Sir Tony will tell you why the award is really special, but now I'd like to call back on stage Honey Sumdad Usman, Zafaria Loren Oreiro, John Savrier Francia, Charlene Tan, Jella Petines, and Eliseo Yanga III. On stage, please, for a photo opportunity. And um, we are also giving them their plaques of appreciation as nominees, as finalists, and as the winners. So our six, six finalists, and of course, Mr. RJ Nugget couldn't join us tonight because he's helping someone in need. Congratulations, RJ, Honey, Zafaria, Charlene, John Xavier, Jella, and Eliseo. And at this point, I would like to invite once again our mentors who were here with us earlier on. For now, Mr. Tony Yap and Attorney Eric Landicho, thank you so much for your support, BCYF and Deloitte Philippines. Just really thank everyone for coming. Once again, the partners of the 2018 CSR Youth Awards, thank you for your continued support to the BCYF Foundation, Deloitte Philippines, Management Association of the Philippines, Group Developers Incorporated, and the National CSR Educators Council. And this evening has been such a wonderful one. 
The night is still young and there's still a lot of time for networking, getting to know our awardees, finalists. And so once again, this is Renalyn Tan Castillos. Thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. Have a safe trip back home. Sir Tony would like to have our friends, the BCYF members, advisory council, supporters, to please join us here on stage. Everybody, please come. We'll have a group photo. We'd also like to call the family of Mr. Navarro. The fam um, we have Miko, Sofia, and Miss Loida Navarro to please join us here on stage. Our friends from Deloitte, please join us. Oh, thank you. Jojo, who else? Don't be shy. If I call your name, you have to be on stage. Mr. Tony Yap, Attorney Eric, Mr. Ed Amistad, Mr. Benny de Guzman, Mr. Philip Huico, Mr. Louis Ampere, um, Attorney Serafin Salvador. Um, who else? Jojo Armenta, Dr. Roman, Dr. Hudtohan, please join us here. All the finalists and the winners, please join us. Tonight is your night, so please do not be shy. Even our Awardees, honey, may we borrow you for a few minutes for a photo opportunity? Even the nominees who are here, I know that you came from many places. Our guests from Asian Social Institute, please join us. Our nominees from Cebu, from all over, from Eastern Visayas State University, please join us here. Give your biggest smile for the biggest photo of the year. And one more on video, we have to say, what do we do, Kuya? We will follow what Kuya says. <laughs> and on video, wave to the camera. Congratulations. This is the most poised waving I'm seeing. <laughs> we have to be happy for our awardees. Congratulations. Great job. <laughs> Okay, smile for the last photo of the evening. Everybody group up, group up, group up.